I first went to Bukes in, in March 1984 on my first climbing road trip with Jerry. We went to Saswa, which was just south of Fontainebleau, uh, and stayed there for uh, probably a week or two. And then we hitched down to Bukes and spent a month climbing there. This is La Rose et la Vampire. <laughs> Possibly my all-time favourite sport climb. I did it in 1986, I think. I think I did the third ascent, maybe. Uh, it's an Antoine Le Minister route, but I think he did it in 1985. All right. Left. Climbing here at Bukes, you know, Bukes was like, you know, possibly sort of birthplace of hard sport climbing. I know it sort of probably originated in Germany, red pointing, but certainly in the early 80s, you know, this is where a lot of the hardest streets in the world were. I came here in um, 2006 and I did it first try, putting the drawers in. So I feel like, which had kind of surprised me at the time, even though I hadn't done it for like 15, eight, 15 years or something, or more maybe, it was still very sort of fresh, the moves still felt really fresh in my head. So now I'm a little bit nervous because I don't know whether I'm going to try and do it first try or whether I just rest on the bolts and do the moves. <laughs> You need a fairly sort of high level of strength. It's like a sort of strength endurance route. Probably takes, yeah, you know, I mean, it probably only takes a minute and a half to climb or something. So it probably favours the boulderer. Oh, it's harder than I remembered. Oh, that is disappointing. Yeah, it was a lot harder than I expected. Right. Oh well. I have to edit out all my swearing. I am very passionate about climbing. I am very sort of competitive against myself, you know, and you know, before we went back to revisit Bukes this time, I really wanted to try and do uh, La Rose first try because, you know, I'd done it first try in 2006 when I'd been there with my wife. So that had immediately kind of set the bar. I was like, right, I've got to do this first try. Um, and yeah, it didn't happen this time. I fell off the very last move, <laughs> which probably partly why I was angry as well. But uh, I quickly, I do get angry, but it, it doesn't last long these days. I think I'm a bit more mellow. And, yeah, I, I'm just sort of thankful to that I'm out, sort of, you know, in these places and still able to climb and everything. Um, but yeah, I do, I'm still quite passionate. <sighs> Cold, cold. Oh, I barely caught that last move, didn't I? <sighs> okay, I'm done. 
Uh, when we went to Bukes, it was just at the time when the French were starting to do a lot of the hardest routes there, like Rêve de Papillon, the Elixir de Villance. And over the next like three or four years, Bukes was to become like the sort of the main venue for hard sport climbing in the world, really. Uh, it was where all the hardest routes were. And so it was obvious destination for anyone yeah, to go and test themselves. Yeah, I reckon we dossed up here. Yeah, in 1984, when me and Jerry first came here, um, we, we definitely spent a few nights down here. So yeah, times have changed. And we, we, we used to hitch on the road there, which was desperate. I mean, in the end, we really lucked out because there was a woman who, who was working at the Auberge de Seguins and she picked us up one day and she said, oh, there's this little house below the cliff above the Auberge. You can, you know, offered it to us for like a month, which was just amazing. So we were right in, right in Bukes. I'd never even heard of Bukes when I came down here. I think Jerry had heard about it and we'd been climbing at Sassoir just before we came on our, before we came down to Bukes and Jerry had done La Bidule at Sassoir, which is like 8A plus, so that was a really big achievement. And he'd on to Chimpanzee Drone, which was 7C plus. Uh, and that year was just, you know, probably one of the best years ever um, in terms of sort of climbing and the places I got to. You know, I mean, I'd only left school a couple of years before and uh, yeah, we were just climbing all the time. You know, went to France with Jerry, went to Frankenjur in the in the winter with Steve. Uh, climbed in North Wales, sort of in the summer, and in Yorkshire in the summer. It was just like the longest year ever. Did strawberries, did Statement of Youth. Um, yeah, no, it was really a good year. All downhill after that. <laughs> There was this project that Laurent Jacob had bolted up um, left of the Spectra up on the Mission Ledge. Um, I think it was originally an aid climb that went from the bottom of the crag to the top of the crag and Laurent Jacob had a, well the bottom pitch had been freed, that was pretty easy, something like 7A or something and then the top pitch was obviously going to be the one that was hard and I think Laurent Jacob was the first person to put some bolts in that and I think a few people had had, French, the French climbers had had a look at it um, but it, no one had sort of really seriously got involved with it. Um, and I remember having a look at that probably in the autumn of 88. And uh, I spent about 17 days trying to work out a sequence um, up that wall and um, finally got something worked out, but I was just kind of burnt out. and. Uh, yeah, decided to sort of leave it and go back home and recharge my batteries, do a little bit of training and then come back again in 89. Take. The crux move of the route was holding this rocking over off this crap edge for that good edge. But it looks like they're going up on these edges now, like I just did it then. Which definitely seems better. Flipping out, it's sharp, I tell you. Slack. Even that's slack. Okay, take. Yeah, it's super bouldery. It's so bouldery. Hold it there. Hold it. <laughs> been out, it's, oh man, it's horrible. It's flipping vicious. That undercut is just like, I mean, it's really good undercut, but it's got quite a pretty aggressive edge to it. And there's nothing else, it's just kind of crap for your feet and you've got to make this big move up to a two-finger stack there. You need to be really motivated. 
it's very bouldery. Really aggressive. Take in Steve, let's see what this next move's like. <laughs> this is not, not very impressive. It's like that, you get it like that. Maybe swap feet. That's the famous move, like that. It's probably seven C plus boulder problem, I would have thought. It's just pockets on a blank wall, really. I'm not selling it, am I? <laughs> it's a classic of its time. Classic of its period. <laughs> no wonder Bukes has gone out of fashion. Bukes is a very sort of unique style of climbing as well, and when I did this in 1989, I'd had like five, five years of climbing at Bukes, uh, working my way through all the sort of hardest routes here. You know, and finishing on this, so I was used to this style of climbing. But it's just, it's absolutely brutal. Really powerful, really bouldery. Yeah. It's always hard revisiting reach, hard reach you've done in the past um, when the motivation and the drive's not there. It just makes you realise how important that motivation and drive is. You know, without you know, with that, it's like you can overcome so much. And you know, today, you know, it's just yeah, it wasn't it wasn't there really. So we felt really hard. Right now.